lot of you who've done work with me know we've got the, <clears throat> the very quick um, kind of mandala of a lot of what we've been doing in PCC is trying to understand how we went from that embedded and sold um, tribal, let's see, how about this? See where, where the uh, lines are, that represents, this is a world view, this is where soul and spirit, conscious intelligence, purpose and meaning exist. Here's the human self embedded in the primal tribal consciousness. There's a participation between human and uh, self and world, but also between the individual and the tribe, uh, between the human being and the rest of nature, and the divine saturating whole thing. How did we move from that uh, participatory, uh, participation mystique, anima mundi, et cetera, to um, the, the modern worldview with its highly distinct uh, Cartesian, rational, egoic self uh, in a world that is voided of meaning, purpose, et cetera. It's just mechanistic and, and uh, matter randomly evolving and so forth. How did we get from there to there? And Bella gives uh, a, a, a huge clue. One in his earlier work where he particularly focused on the nature of the axial, uh, which is the, great, the, the, the huge revolutions in, um, can you time me? Um, just do like do do the thirteen minutes things. Um, uh, the axial takes place in the you know roughly the first millennium, millennium BCE, but particularly around the sixth century, where uh, religions, philosophies, birth of science uh, just emerge with uh, this kind of convulsion of consciousness right across the <clears throat> major civilizations of the world, and. Um, results in a, a powerful sense of there being a transcendent reality that is uh, superordinate to this world. Um, and there's a tension between the, uh, this transcendent spiritual uh, higher domain and, and this world of, of, of opinion, of appearance, of, of falsehood, of maya. Uh, uh, it's the cave of shadows uh, compared with the, the true uh, archetypal light. But the human being has a special relationship uh, to that. And um, in addition to that tension between the mundane and the transcendent, um, uh, there's a critical reflexivity becomes part of it. And also, and this is huge, uh, there's a democratization, as it were, of access to the divine, to the transcendent. It's no longer locked into a particular social political structure, a hierarchy where only the pharaoh, the king at the top, uh, has, it mediates the access to the divine and is at the top of the pyramid of, of uh, the class system, etc. And um, one of the things that Bella makes uh, very clear in the course of this book is how much the evolution of social and political systems absolutely requires and accompanies uh, powerful transformations of the symbol systems, religious, mythic, meta-narratives, uh, uh, that, that these go together. And there's a, um, a uh, the, the, the shift from this primal to this axial, the, the transcendent, um, and then finally to the modern is um, mediated by something that uh, he focuses on for an important part of the book called the archaic. I'm just going to do a mini, uh, a mini worldview here, is this pyramid of, um, with the, the pharaoh at the top. It's very vertical civilizations. They're very much focused on, on the, heaven, the heavens, the heavenly gods, the, 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 the astronomy, the astrology is very um, uh, vertical. And at the top of the pyramid is uh, uh, the, the divine, which is identified with not only the gods, or a god in particular that's sovereign, but with the top of the political social pyramid as well. 
the pharaohs there, and then, then there's the, the hierarchy below it. And what happens in, see this is a, there's a whole movement from the, the tribal through the axial, to, uh, th sorry, through the archaic to the axial, and it's summed up very nicely by this um, uh, description that uh, Bella gives in which, as he says, it would seem that the shift from the tribal to archaic society only became possible when one man focused so much attention on himself that he could claim that he and he alone was not capable, uh, was not only capable of rule, but capable of maintaining society's relationship to the gods or before long to the god. It was as though the king or pharaoh himself divine or semi-divine was the necessary fulcrum to move society to a new level of social organization. It is as though the archaic king unleashed an explosion of atomic energy capable of moving what had for millennia not been willing to move. Out of, out of the, 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 the tribal, the, the, he, he also gives lots of great insights into the nature of the tribal consciousness uh, using that term in, as I would say primal. Um, the sense of ubiety, the sense of how it's very focused on divinity and meaning residing in the local place and the human beings, um, uh, the, the, the powerful spirits that, one, that enter into one in ritual are ancestral as well as you know, animal and m mountains and forests that there's a kind of, as he calls it, like a pre-human flux that one participates in. But something happens with the birth of, of these powerful archaic civilizations where the, these kind of warrior um, upstarts eventually organize so much and through agricultural and, and domestication of animals and plants, et cetera, militarization of the society, um, that there's a, a burst of, of culture, of literacy, peace uh, is maintained within the realm. There's these positive things as well as this you know, terrific um, what we would regard as quite oppressive. Um, and then what happens with the axial is that, in a sense, the, the critical reflection gets to such a point where the, the God, the transcendent, bursts beyond this world and, there's a, a, and, and no longer does the social state, uh, the, the society, the state, have um, control of the um, access to the divine and instead the, the mystic in India, the sage in China, the prophet in, in um, Israel, and the philosopher in Greece, like Plato and Aristotle and Socrates, they all can have direct access to this transcendent reality apart from the, the social political structure. So there's a democratization of the uh, of spiritual status and participation in the divine. This is a huge transformation. Now, what, what happens is that, um, and, and here, since I'm, I'm moving to the end of my, my allotted uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to uh, show the kind of insight that comes from integrating the, 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 the sort of thinking that Bella has uh, provided us with and careful, careful research. He is, like a, he is like a paradigm of good scholarship. I mean, just, I, we, could, we all admire him. All of the faculty that, that, uh, that read him just admired this high quality of, of modest encyclopedic scholarship. And um, integrating that with the kinds of insights that Brian has been bringing for years to our program, and we, I, I, I'll give one example of the kind of, um, of perspective that opens up. We have, we can now see that that evolving sentience within, uh, within nature, within the earth, within uh, cellular, uh, within the cell itself, and then the multicellular and the, and the uh, eukaryote organisms, and then into um, animals and uh, the early 
the earliest primitive animals, the bilateral uh, uh, worm, and then ev eventually to the, 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 the vertebrates and, and the tetrapods and, 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 and then mammals and primates and hominids, what you're seeing is a gradual concentration and differentiation of what was originally just nerve cells and m mus muscle tissue and, and nerve tissue. Um, it, it, that becomes the foundation for mind and will. And there's a localization, a concentration, a elevation of it, a centering, a, an empowerment of it until the brain is so powerful that it is able to start ma manipulating the ex external reality and, uh, and, and, sh and become autonomous relative to the environment. And this, uh, we could say that the Cartesian Newtonian mindset from this point of view is the apotheosis of the vertebrate brain, right? The Cartesian Newtonian mindset is the apotheosis of the vertebrate brain. Why? One, because it nails the objective world, kind of literally. Like, it nails, it just like, it is so capable of manipulating uh, the material world so effectively, and it gives such a sense of empowerment that it is an apotheosis in that sense of what the vertebrate always was trying to, you know, get a sense for how to manipulate uh, and understand, discern the world. But it's also the apotheosis, and this is where Bella particularly comes in, because it, it permits us to, it, it only was possible because there was a shifting symbolization of the human being's relationship to the cosmos. And those of you who've done whole courses with me know the backstory of this, that it's the Copernican revolution and the, and the scientific revolution generally that essentially gives, gives the human, the modern mind, a sense of its essentially divine power. It, the solar logos descends, as it were, into, the, into, into man's mind. And it's very, it's Eurocentric, it's patriarchal, it's, it's, it's rational. So the enlightenment, that solar, it's the human mind, the rational mind of the modern age that has essentially re achieved a kind of divine status and it alone has um, the capacity for intelligence and moral aspiration and, and spiritual uh, uh, sensibility and purpose and meaning and value. It's all there. And the rest of the material world is like the bottom of the pyramid. And what we can now see is that, I, I can give more background on that for many of you know it though, I mean just like in one sentence. Alexander Pope says for the Enlightenment, uh, nature's laws lay, um, uh, lay hid uh, in darkness. And then God said, let Newton be, and all was light. See, there's the new genesis. Uh, there's the new, uh, and the, um, God dies, man gets capitalized, etc. And so, what I believe, if a second axial era is going to take place, it is going to require a, ra a, a radical universalization of the spiritual status of all beings in the cosmos and in the earth community. What the original axial revolution did was do it to human beings. Um, like, any human being could be a, a become a mystic or a philosopher or a prophet in, in principle it, and have direct access to the divine. Uh, and that broke out of the old social political structure. Uh, now, what seems to be required is us recognizing that all forms of, perfect, um, uh, that all forms of, of being in our earth community the tortoises, the lions, the, 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 the water, the, the, the heavens, um, all, all these also um, can be seen as participating in the nature of the divine and that this, this kind of appropriation of the whole anima mundi and of the transcendent kind of God over the world that modern man did 
is now going through a great descent and what we could call the great turning, the great unraveling, um, the postmodern turn is in a sense a kind of a, a, a deep dethroning of this hubris of the brilliant uh, primate vertebrate that's, that's basically taking down the whole ecosystem of the planet because of its separation from the whole. Uh, and so what I think is happening here is a kind of great, you know, I, I think of it as the great descent. It's a great, it's like the red book of Jung's, but the whole civilization is going through it. Um, and uh, th this can bring, there's a possibility, as always happens in every deep um, journey to the deep psyche uh, of the cosmos and of ourselves, of, of, of uh, death and rebirth. Behind every death, behind, behind every dethronement and dying is the possibility of a new, new um, mode of being uh, that, that in which the old specialness is deconstructed. You know, I'm the only sent, uh, I'm the only intelligent consciousness in the, in the known universe. That gets deconstructed, but then what reemerges after this, this, this death is a new sense of specialness, namely that I am grounded in the cosmos itself and the cosmos is being itself in my form and in human form as it can in no other way. And that is simultaneously humbling and, and ennobling, elevating, exalting. And I think that's precisely the, the death rebirth um, transformation uh, that could make possible a, a true new uh, 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 second um, axial era that would in some sense uh, preserve the differentiation that's taken place and uh, permit a, um, a reconnection with the, with the, with the uh, cosmos, the ensouled cosmos.